spotlight section. And hopefully many of you know that what spotlight is. This is a section that is devoted to the films that we love, that we've seen at other festivals. Um, and this is a film that I saw when I was at uh, Cannes earlier, uh, on, last year. It's 2024. I mean, it was 2023 at the Cannes Film Festival. Uh, when I was on the Critics Week jury, uh, they had an opening night film, Ama Gloria, that uh, just blew me away. Uh, I immediately had uh, festival envy because I felt like when I saw this film that it would be a perfect Sundance film. Um, it is a really emotional and touching film. It's very nuanced. And it has one of the most uh, incredible child performances I've ever seen. Uh, so you'll soon see that. Um, but I'm just so happy that you're all here to experience this beautiful film. And I'm even more excited that uh, we have the writer and director of Angoria here. Please welcome Maria Anjikoli. <laughs> so I'm just gonna thank you to be here. I'm very proud, very nervous. It's first time in America, and yeah. <laughs> thank you for the spotlight. Thank you for inviting us. And I will be, I will be. Sorry, it's difficult for a French girl to say that. I will be very pleased to answer um, all your questions after that, if you have one. <laughs> Because normally when you have uh, movies with children, they always have this storytelling, you know? I've met 300 or 3,000 children. I, I went everywhere in France to find a good one. And I was so lucky that it was real. So I had to see other was a children to be sure. But then after, not, not even a week, we said with my producer, Benedict Cova, 
okay, she's the one, and we have to accept it. <laughs> and, um, Louise is very funny because that was her first time she act or pretend to act, or, and she was happy to play games with adults somehow. And when I told her, okay, you have the, the part, she said, okay, Mary, it's nice, but I want to read the script now. <laughs> And that was not expected, you know, it was like, okay, so she had a kind of a tiny character. And she read the script with her mother, and she came back to me like two days after that, and she told me, hmm, it's good, it's a good job, Mary, I mean, I like to stop it. <laughs> and I was like, really? I accept. And I said, okay. <laughs> But now we have to work, you know, and uh, because it was COVID and stuff like that, we didn't have to change to have uh, any rehearsal. This is the rehearsal one and Ilsa, uh, Gloria in the movie. So I was very stressed, I have to say. And we went to Cabo Verde uh, to shoot, and we arrived for the first day of shooting, and I didn't know if she was really able to be a movie character and an actress during five weeks, you know. Because it's something to play with a child for one hour or two hours, but for five weeks, and she's in every shot. So really, I began to feel very, very stressed, <laughs> I have to say. And for the first week of the shooting, um, I was, you know, I'm everywhere on the screen because I was hiding behind in a bed or somewhere, because I wanted to be close to her. And I was whispering all the time, you do that and then you, you go and you say that. And, and she was doing the stuff, but she was a bit mechanical, right? Because I told her what to do. And after one week, she told me, Mary, you know what? I know my lines. <laughs> She was six years old, you know, <laughs> because that's weird. And she said, no, no, I know my mom. <laughs> so I said, okay, let's try. And motor, Sato, and she knew her mind. And she understood, because I think I was very lucky with Louise, because she's a smart uh, little girl. And she's very um, attentive. She's very, she takes care of stuff, and she's in, in the present. She's really, uh, and she's a very good listener. So when you, so I think it's very good for an actor. And then she's smart again, so she wanted to, to be nice also with the other uh, who she plays with. So she was very generous, you know? She played it herself. But then she's just what she is, you know? And I'm just so lucky one, really. And a bit of editing. And also, I really spoke to the tight framing. Did you speak to the creative choice and size of the, the, the animation? Mm -hmm. And the tight framing of all the shots. The, the tight framing of the shots. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh. sorry. Um, okay, the animation, it's. Uh, when I was writing the script, I was stuck. I was like, there was something missing, you know, uh, in the writing. And um, actually, I work in an office only with graphic designer and painters. I, they are my friends. You know? I love their attitude and the way they, they are. So I was just watching them, and I was like, oh, maybe that's the key for the main character. What she cannot express by words. I can tell that to the audience by the painting, you know. So I asked one of my friends, Pierre Manuelier, who made the, the, the animation, to help me. And he said, okay. And um, I asked him if we could do that with painting. So it's really painting, uh, frame by frame, you know. Like, and he told me no. <laughs> and I said, why? And he told me, you don't know what it is. It's going to be hell. It's going to gonna take you long. I mean, it's going to take time, you know, and we don't have it. And we don't have the money, so it's new. And I say, yeah, but I love the painting. <laughs> <laughs> I actually 
actually I go to a supermarket and buy uh, some paintings for him, and I ask him just to try. And he tries to say, okay, that's nice, so maybe you can imagine something. And actually, don't do that in a movie. Mix live action and animation, it's hell. Because <laughs> it's really hell, it's not just paying time, you know? To, and we started the animation before we did the casting. So really long time before. And we finished the animation a long time after the editing of the live action. So for me, it was a something, yeah? it was a spotted. And then why the, that? It's because um, I wanted the movie to be really in the eyes of the, the child. And so for me, what is out of the frame is more important maybe than what you see. So, and when you're a child, you're, you're there. So you, you have to imagine a lot of things, you know, that you can't see or that you can't understand really properly. So I thought that the former, this one, was the good one for the, for the movie. Yeah. Is there, is there was anything in your life or someone you knew? Yeah, thank you for asking. Actually, the movie is dedicating to Lorinda, uh, who's, who, 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 were, who was my nanny when I was young. Um, so um, I grew up with her like, every day, like all the time. And when I was six years old, she told me that she had to go back to her country and to be with her family, right? And I was really sad, like, it was the saddest day in my life. So you can imagine I had a pretty good uh, childhood, because uh, it's okay. <laughs> um, that, I, I was really, like, it was the end of the world. So I refused to say goodbye to her. I could not, it was too awful for me. She was everything for me. And then, because we're still very close, um, and she still um, talked to me as, um, her daughter, you know, like really. Um, years after, I was like, oh, I was so selfish when I was young, you know? I never asked myself who she was, where she was coming from, what was her life, and she was only Lorinda, you know? She didn't have a proper name, or, you know what I mean? So, also in Paris, in the street, in the garden, you have a lot of nannies from everywhere. South America, uh, Thailand, wherever. And nobody wants to talk about them because I think it's my guess. Maybe I'm wrong, but there is something very taboo uh, in this relationship that uh, appears in the house, in the more intimate place ever, the house, you know? And the taboo is from everyone because um, the parents doesn't want to know if there is any love, you know, involved in this relationship. So that's what they pay, you know, because, and it's a bit tricky when love appears, you know. And for also the little child, it's tricky because you can't say that you love more your nannies than your mother. That's not, you know, you don't tell that to her. And also for the nannies, because they all, I mean, most of the nannies I've met, they all share the same story. They have children in their country. They have to leave their country in order to raise all children in Western countries. And when they love the children they take care of, it's tricky because, you know, they have a conflict with their own children somehow. So for me, it was something that a movie can, you know, just ask the question, what happens here, you know? Actually, there was no rehearsal. Oh. But, 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 as Ilsa is a non-professional actor too, what happened is during the shooting, there were like two non-professional friends. And 
So if they teach each other what to do and they learn together what's going on here, you know? So they became very close because of that. And they were really like a team of non-professional actors. <laughs> Uh, wow, well, uh, that's the story of every movie, you know, like, you want something and it doesn't go that way, that's, uh, what? Well. Uh, I have so many, <laughs> I don't know where to start, but, um, no, uh, I mean, every day you want something and something else happens, but for example, no, for example, the last uh, sequence, in the airport when they say goodbye to each other. Actually, my producer, who is a very intelligent person and nice person, uh, told me something very difficult for me to understand, is that we were going to shoot this uh, sequence the last day, because we all have to go to the plane at 8 o'clock to go back to France. <laughs> because it's the end of the movie, you know, and we cannot mix it, you know? It was like, so again, I was not sleep I was not sleeping that day because we did put with, and we were all like with the luggage and we had to go, you know. <laughs> and I was an horrible director that day. I was like, really, no, it's not gonna happen. It's gonna, it's horrible. Let's do that. And then we decided to shoot. And what is very emotional for me is, um, you know, during the movie, the child cries a lot and. A lot. But in this sequence, Ilsa and the child and Wiz, they were really saying goodbye to each other for real, you know? Because Ilsa were, were, uh, was going to stay in Kazakh for a while, and Wiz was going to take a flight with us, you know? And that was not expected, you know what I mean? But so the goodbyes, they, they, it's a real goodbye, you know? So, yeah. That makes me want to cry. <laughs> Um, I want to thank you for being here at Sunday. Let's give Maria a big round. Search for MyOwnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side. <laughs>